Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. I'm going to apologize in advance, because this episode is going to be a little discombobulated and a little all over the place, because I had a lot of things to do, but none of which would really fill an episode. So I just kind of mashed them all together. And part one, as you'll see here, is the Goer 3. This is a backup vehicle that I built for the Jupiter mission. But seeing as how our actual Jupiter mission is now going to Neptune, I felt it necessary to actually get one to Jupiter that's going to stay there and fulfill the intended role. And because I didn't really want to expose you guys to doing the same exact flight like three times in a row, I just cut this one down to about a two minute clip. The flight itself was pretty flawless, nothing really failed. This is our transfer burn, which all in all goes flawlessly and uh, puts us on a pretty good course uh, for Jupiter. We'll just have to check and see in just a second what all of this bought us. All in all, not too bad. Uh, we will be planning a mid-course correction in a bit to bring that down, but we've got a few other things we want to get to. And first on our list is this little guy, which we haven't seen in many, many, many episodes. Uh, this is Soft One, our Saturn uh, orbital flyby uh, spacecraft, which is just a few days out from uh, hitting the gravity well of Saturn. This is super exciting. This is our very first time uh, ever flying by Saturn. Uh, not the greatest flyby, certainly not what we had uh, planned for in that we're going to be way the hell out here, but it's still exciting. So we're going to get there. And I've chosen to spare you the tedium of watching me tinker with this node forever because uh, ultimately it is futile. What I've completely forgotten about Soft 1, it, it is completely devoid of fuel. All of these tanks, including the primary, are completely empty. This thing is uh, coasting, and that's all it can do at this moment, so we've got no real choice but to just let it coast and get rid of that node. What we can do is just warp through and get to the actual encounter when the important things can start happening. And Kerbal alarm clock is throttling us back now. It's going to give us our official alarm. There it is. So what we need to do now is just set this uh, maneuver node at our periapsis, our closest approach to Saturn, and give ourselves an alarm. It's going to be in like 70 some odd days, so we've got some time to uh, attend to a few other things before we can really come back here and start paying attention to stuff. But that doesn't mean we're not going to hang around for the actual encounter. We're still a couple minutes off of that, so let's... Uh, no, I don't want to get rid of that node. Let's have a look around. Where is our friend Saturn? Oh, there's Jupiter. So it should be somewhere in this plane. Um, yep, there we go. There's Saturn. So that's where we're going. It's still just this little dot way out on the horizon. All right, well, let's uh, see if we can't run our radio in command. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. It doesn't appear on flight computer. Right? Yep. Nope. Okay, so we'll check here with our action. Oh, man. 1.17 hours for our command to reach the spacecraft. Eh, wow. Yeah, well, we are really far away, so let's just go ahead and time warp. we got an hour to kill, right? No big deal. I mean, yeah. Oh, there we go. All the science. All the things. Hi, Saturn. I brought chips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and goo. Man, yeah, we should uh, I'm gonna keep that. Oh, yeah. Let's uh, start radioing the stuff in. I'm going to take my time and do it slowly because I need to make sure that it tells me that I have collected the science for each of these. Because sometimes it just doesn't give you credit for stuff. And man, that is just plain old frustrating. So, the good news is the bandwidth on this dish is pretty good, and even some of these uh, high MIT science experiments transmit through relatively quickly. Boom, look at that. Done. This Voyager antenna is a miraculous piece of equipment. <laughs> so, we're just going to collect all of these, and I'll reset that. I don't know why. I have two of them. But... I think that's going to do it for our soft one for the time being. Yeah, not the greatest periapsis. We're certainly not going to get that flyby contract. That makes me sad. But we're going to jump over here to alarm clock, and we've got a go or two maneuver. So let's jump to ship. So this is our super lucky uh, go or two, which is uh, going to be on its way to Neptune in like 5,000 days. All right, we can lock those for the time being. I don't want it throwing off this maneuver node. We've got a 
a little while to go before we have to actually burn this node. So, uh, yeah, debating the time warp. Let's go ahead and tuck Kerbal Alarm Clock away. This is where we need to be. This is the next task on our agenda. But so many things happening in such close proximity to one another, making decision making a little weird. But first, I have decided that this thing deserves a rename. And uh, I've kind of already chosen a name, sorry. But we're going to name this uh, in honor. It will be the uh, Kentucky Kev. Because a phenomenon as lucky as this really only comes about once every 10 years or so. And even then, only just under just the right circumstance. But let's go ahead and get the uh, honorary Kentucky Kev spacecraft out to its maneuver node so that we can uh, get this whole Neptune encounter thing on a roll. So with a little bit of time warp, um, we've decided not to use the AJ-10 for this bird. We're just going to ride it on the back of these RCS thrusts, which means it's going to take too long for me to just show you in real time. But other than being just a little mistimed, uh, it went very well. And by very well, I mean I'm going to have to spend a good deal of time adjusting maneuver nodes to uh, make sure we still keep our Neptune encounter. But, you know, to make sure that uh, things stay stable, I'm going to shut off the fuel here in the transfer stage so we're not all wobbling around. And uh, take a look and see what this bought us. Well, we are... are well, with this node, we are still set to hit Neptune, but I want to see exactly how close I can get us. All right, let's take a look at this. Yeah. Well, after this node, we will still have an encounter. Mm -hmm. Not a very good one. Good. So I'm going to play with some nodes here. I'm going to speed this up, and we'll see if we can't get something uh, a whole lot better. So with a lot of indecision on how to split the duty between the two nodes, I finally came to something where I think it's going to work and are with, well within our fuel budgeting. So with all that said and done, it is probably time to set an alarm for our maneuver node to make sure that we don't miss this. Uh, one year and 280 days. So uh, Kentucky Kev, we're gonna ignore you for a very long time, but thank you for impressing us so greatly. And it is time now to turn our attention to the next part of our mission today, which is not advanced stage combustions completion, but uh, the RA-9 Project Air, which is about to make its encounter with Mars. And so here's the old bird now. Uh, we are one course correction away from just getting our angle set up for what I hope to be will a, be a successful aero capture. Now let's just take a look, let's see where we are. All right, yep, okay. We are uh, still a couple of days out from our encounter. Um, yeah, all right, let's focus view here. This might make things a little easier. Yeah, currently we are going to entirely miss Mars' atmosphere. That, even with this adjustment, will miss entirely Mars' atmosphere. Um, I don't know what kind of altitude we would need to get that uh, Perry Apsis to to make a successful aero capture, and I was really hoping that any of the other two flights heading to Mars would get here before Project Air, because uh, this is the one that I want to see succeed, because it's the one that has the most uh, untested methodology built into it. But uh, we'll see. All right, let's just uh, time warp up to our encounter and uh, try to make this maneuver. And with just a small interruption from Kerbal Alarm Clock, and let's trying to find our just wait for that little bump and we are in Mars SOI so we can go ahead and make this adjustment now it'll be a little more efficient since we're a little further out well that one's empty Ooh, not a whole lot of fuel here it's probably why we had it locked all right uh, we do have some fuel in the uh, glide lander itself which I would not be ashamed to use to hit an appropriate angle but yeah you can see we're just going to try to keep monitor this periapsis and get it down to something in the acceptable level. All this turning is certainly not making it happy. Um, really no point in firing that main engine. Uh, I, it is more efficient than these RCS thrusters, but I worry about overshooting and then being kind of uh, stuck and out of fuel. I really like to not use the fuel from the glide lander if possible. I'm just going to go ahead and lay on the pedal here for a while and try to bring that periapsis uh, down to something a little more reasonable. 
and I really have no idea what reasonable entails in this particular instance, so if any of you know of a good uh, arrow capture altitude, or if you think, uh, you know, 20 some odd, 14 some odd kilometers is unreasonable, please do let me know in the comments. There's still time to save this mission. <laughs> All right, we're just going to do a very uh, quick once-over of the spacecraft here. Yeah, that should not be full because uh, weight restrictions. Yeah, no, no point in filling it. That's that's why it's set that way, it's, right? And I can't remember. Did I lock those tanks in time? And why is the fuel balance off? That seems weird, right? Should I try to top that off from the transfer? Huh. Yeah, now I'm going to have to go back and review. Oh well. But that's going to do it for this episode, guys. I'm so sorry about the discombobulatoriness of this episode. I promise never to do again. But uh, thank you so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it. And I will see all of you next time. See you later.